Hey everybody, really excited to be on with you today. Hopefully everybody is doing fantastic. We've got a great topic that I'm gonna be presenting on here and it's uh, top five ways to prevent the flu. So many of you guys, you know, I, I just recently posted something on the, the how, to, how to beat the cold and flu and um, in 24 hours we had like 225 shares on it. So it told me that you guys really want this information and so I decided I would go live and uh, go through really my top strategies. And also I wanna be able to help answer questions that you guys have. And so as you're coming onto this live broadcast, definitely let me know where you are coming in from and um, any, any specific questions that you have in regards to the immune system in particular, that's what we're gonna really focus on, uh, the immune system today and how to prevent the cold and flu. You know, the media is out there and they're saying, this is the worst flu that we may have seen since 1920s when we had um, this huge, gigantic, uh, you know, lots of people died that we had this, uh, this flu epidemic and um, there were a lot of deaths. And so people are saying it's really, really bad. Some of you guys may have suffered through it and, um, you know, my heart goes out to you. Fortunately, um, you know, in our household, it has not hit, and uh, there's a, there's a big reason why, and uh, we're going to go through that today. I'm gonna I'm gonna actually explain why uh, my family hasn't been hit by it, and uh, why I want to make sure your family does not get hit by it if you haven't, or that you don't get it again, or if you are suffering through it, that you'll know exactly what to do to uh, to make sure you get through it. So Bridget is coming in from uh, beautiful mountains of Colorado. Bridget, thanks so much for being on with us. We got Jordan, my main man, Jordan, watching from Atlanta. Uh, let's see, we've got who else is on today with us. So if you're on, you know, let me know where you are coming in from and also any questions in particular that you have in regards to the immune system. And so again, our topic is top five ways to prevent the flu. And again, if you really like, um, you know, whatever particular topic, as I'm going through, I'm gonna explain these, these top five ways. If you really want me to focus more on one of these topics in a future live, uh, live stream here on Facebook, definitely like and love it. Like hit the like button and the love button, because I'm gonna be looking at that later and that'll help me understand what kind of topics you guys really want. So, and also comment in on there. Um, so that way, when I go live, I'll know exactly what you guys want. So anyways, um, again, top five ways to prevent the flu. Flu is really bad this, this time of year. So number one is going to be high quality sleep. And Wendy actually put in sleep in all caps. So Wendy, you must have read my mind <laughs> because that was the first thing that popped into my head when I thought about how to prevent the cold and cold or flu. And so in our society, we typically have really bad sleep habits. We usually go to bed late and then um, we typically don't sleep at a real high quality. So this time of year, when it gets, when our days are shorter, it's that much more important to be in bed early. So maybe during the summer, you might be able to stay up a little bit later in the winter. It's a really bad idea. So I always recommend winding down by nine o'clock. If you have goals, for example, that you're trying to accomplish after 9 p.m., you are not gonna sleep well at night, typically. And so the reason why is when you have goals, like so for example, if I'm working here at my computer and all of a sudden I'm like, okay, I wanna accomplish this next goal, I want to you know, do whatever, answer questions on Facebook, then my brain will start signaling, it'll start um, producing more dopamine. And dopamine is an excitatory neurotransmitter my fight or flight response may even pick up just a little bit. And it's not a lot, it's not like my heart is racing. However, that's suppressing melatonin production. So melatonin is our key sleep hormone. So really we want by 9 p.m. to start winding down if at all possible. And what that means is try to get out of blue lights, for example, like such as what's coming in from your computer. You can also wear blue light blocking glasses which is a really good idea if you do have to, to work at the computer. Um, in fact, Jordan, can you, um, can you grab that, that little thing right there? So he's gonna get my blue light blocking glasses that I can show you guys here. So yeah, here we go. So these are the uh, Swanix right there. You can see that, you can find those on amazon.com. This is what a blue light blocking glasses look like. So now, 
everything is in orange. And this is actually protecting my eyes and protecting my circadian rhythm from the blue light. So these can be really helpful. And so if I'm working in the evening, I typically like to put those on. Anytime for me, like after 8 p.m., I usually will put those on. Um, so if you are working late at your computer or whatever it is, watching TV, it's a good idea to put those on. But in general, you want to start winding down, be in bed by 10 p.m., ideally. Um, every hour of sleep between 10 and midnight, so every hour of sleep before midnight, I should say, is equivalent to three hours of regenerative sleep after midnight. So it's a really good idea to be in bed early, start winding down, be really intentional about um, making sure that your body is winding down. Okay, you drink less water. We're going to talk about hydration today, but you want to drink less water in the evening, uh, and you just want to allow your body to wind down, reduce stress. You can you can read a little bit, you can talk with your spouse, or um, you know just kind of relax, meditate, take some do some deep breathing. It's a perfect time for some meditation, some prayer, uh, maybe visualizing on scripture, whatever it is that's going to work best for you for winding down. I would highly recommend that. And make sure your room is as dark as possible. So you want your room to be super dark. Also, you can do an eye mask. I'm a huge fan of eye masks. And so basically, it's just a mask that you put over your eyes, and it will block out any sort of tangent light that would come in. And any sort of light, like street lights that come in from the outside, it's going to suppress some of your melatonin production. Your body is going to produce the most amount of sleep hormone, melatonin, basically when you when when uh, there's no light coming into your eye in particular but really anywhere in your body touching anywhere in your body so even even a small amount of light touching the back part of our knee can actually suppress some melatonin production and increase cortisol which is stress hormone so we want to keep our room as dark as possible it's super important and melatonin is this sleep hormone that your body produces it's also extremely powerful for your immune system. So if we want to prevent colds and flus, we've got to ramp up our melatonin production. That works great. And if you're having trouble sleeping, supplementing with melatonin can be really helpful. We've got one, <clears throat> one called uh, sleep support, which is a really great form of melatonin, a uh, long lasting melatonin in your system. So that can be helpful. Also, there's other herbs like uh, <clears throat> diffusing essential oils, like lavender, lemongrass can be really helpful. Uh, chamomile, you can drink herbal teas like drinking chamomile tea, valerian root tea, lemongrass. Um, there's a brand called Traditional Medicinals that has a uh, herbal tea called Nighty Night Tea. And that's really good. It's a blend of passion flower and lemongrass, I believe. And I think there might be lavender in there. Chamomile, I know, is in there. And so all of those things are really good for reducing stress hormones, helping promote the production of GABA, which is an inhibitory neurotransmitter, and melatonin, so you can sleep really, really, really good. And so I would be as intentional as possible with getting good sleep right now. So let's see who else is on. Uh, Sandy from Woodstock. Sandy, thanks so much for being on. We got Susan from Michigan. Brett's coming in here from Atoka, Tennessee. Thanks for being on, Brett. Uh, let's see. We've got uh, Josefina. She says she's had a flu for one month now. Okay, well, Josefina, I am really sorry to hear that, but thank God you're on this call right here because hopefully we can figure out what's going on and, and get you on the right lifestyle strategies to overcome this. So thanks for letting us know. Um, let's see, Grace says, are you going to have a summary of these? My lunch break is almost over. Yes, actually, this will be replayed. So you can actually listen to this um, here after after you get off from work it'll still be on my page so guys number two all right so number one was high quality sleep what's number two going to be if you know and if you've been following my work you may know um if you know go ahead and put in the comments box what it's going to be all right so go ahead and do that let's see paula says it never stays on she must be talking about the eye mask i know that can be frustrating the eye mask sometimes will come off so you need to make sure you you adjust the tightness to get it on just right, Paula. I, I think that's really important. I know I've had that that experience as well. Let's see. Wendy says hydration with a question mark. And Wendy, if you said hydration with a question mark, actually you are right. So so Wendy's been following my work. Um, so she's absolutely right. 
So number two is super hydration. We got to really make sure we're flushing our system. So drinking a lot of good, clean water is extremely important. And when we're drinking a lot of water, it helps our body to reduce the overall microbial load and just helps us flush out unwanted toxins. We need water for every metabolic activity in our body. So we want to hydrate well. And it's so important to make sure you've got a really good water filtration system. So get a good water filtration system like a reverse osmosis system or a big Berkey system is good. Um, something along those lines. Reverse osmosis will take out all the, the uh, toxins, but it will also take out the minerals. So you can add back just a pinch of uh, good high quality salt back into it to add back those minerals. Also lemon water, apple cider vinegar water are fantastic. Lemon has vitamin C, it has citrus bioflavonoids. So vitamin P, which actually helps synergize vitamin C's effects, um, which improves blood flow and oxygen extraction into the cells. Also really good for ramping up the immune system. So I love lemon water, lime water. My family, we do a lot of um, lemon, we make our own lemonade. And so basically it's just organic lemon juice, water, or we'll use lime juice and make a limeade. And, uh, and stevia, in fact, the sweet leaf brand stevia has a lemon drop flavored stevia that works really good. So we'll put a little bit of that in there and a touch of salt and it works great. And even people that don't like, yeah, that tell me they don't like stevia, you put a tiny pinch of salt in with that and um, you'll notice that actually the flavor is, is greatly improved, doesn't have that bitter aftertaste. So that's a, it's kind of a little hack, a little trick there, but you gotta hydrate well. So I would recommend making sure you're drinking a minimum half your body weight in ounces. And this time of year, because it's colder in the uh, you know Northern climates, we're typically not drinking as much as we are in the summer. So we have a lower level of thirst, so we're not hydrating well. And, uh, and, and so we wanna really be intentional about that, making sure we're drinking a ton of good high, high quality hydration. Right here, I've actually got a little bit of broth. So a little bit of diluted broth, something I'll drink on a regular basis because it's got high quality minerals that I like to use. And so uh, let's see who else is commenting in. So Sandy says pink Himalayan salt. Absolutely, Sandy, that's my favorite. Pink Himalayan salt. There's other good brands too. Redmond's Real Salt is a good pink salt. Celtic salt uh, is a good one as well that you can use. So those are great. Let's see, Paula says she uses her hydration tabs from Sprouts Market. Um, certainly can do that, or you could just really focus on good hydration on your own, but staying hydrated is so important. Sandy says she loves her Berkey, and Berkey water systems is a great water system that you can get. Um, let's see, Donna says she never has the flu. She gets adjustments weekly. She's talking about chiropractic adjustments. And chiropractic adjustments are extremely powerful. They actually really boost up the immune system and help the immune system to function significantly better. So if you are seeing a chiropractor, um, definitely this time of year is probably the most important time of year to make sure you're making your appointments and possibly even schedule an extra appointment to keep your immune system really strong and healthy. So I'd highly recommend that. Um, I know I make sure I get adjusted. I've been um, under chiropractic care now for gosh, 13, 13 years. And so I make sure that I'm getting adjusted minimum once a week. Okay. And if I'm under more stress then typically more often. All right. So I would make sure that you're getting adjusted. Ideally something like once a week, getting your, your, your spine and nervous system checked it, checked uh, at least once a week, unless um, you're dealing with a crisis like chronic pain, or you've got, you know, major dysfunction going on in your spine, then you may need more care. And so, um, or if you have the fever or the flu, sometimes, you know, I've had clients, come into our chiropractic clinic and, and get adjusted multiple times um, in a week. So four or five, six times, sometimes multiple times a day to help strengthen up their immune system and allow their body to heal faster. So that's, that was really good. Glad that, um, that you chimed in there, Donna. Thank you for that. Okay, number three. What is number three gonna be? All right, let's see. What do you guys think? So we talked about hydration. We have talked about high quality sleep. Okay, number three is going to be stay off sugar and carbs. And so you knew that was coming. So we know that sugar feeds bacteria, viruses, it, it deflates the immune system. So our immune system has something called a phagocytic index, which is basically the ability of the white blood cell to particularly like the macrophages to go out and to eat microbes in our body. And so when we take in sugar, when we are consuming sugar and our blood sugar jump, jumps up to about 120, 
which really doesn't take much. If you drink half a glass of orange juice, your blood sugar will jump up uh, to 120 or above. And so if you're doing carbs, a lot of carbs uh, and sugars, then that actually reduces this ability, this phagocytic index, this ability of the immune cells to scavenge pathogens by 75%. So 75% reduction. So only 25% is effective. So we want to make sure that we're keeping sugars and carbs out of our diet, really focus on a lot of healthy fats, lots of antiviral herbs. So things like garlic, basil, oregano, thyme, um, these things are amazing. So herbs, you can grow your own herbs and go out and pick them. You can also get dried herbs. You can do um, herbal essential oils can be really helpful. So these things are <laughs> so good for the body. We want to make sure we're using those. Lots of vegetables can be really helpful. Broccoli, cauliflower, uh, asparagus, things like that. And um, I'm a huge fan of a lot of fats, getting a lot of healthy fats, avocados, olives, olive oil, grass-fed butter. These are all really good nutrient rich. They're going to help stabilize your blood sugar and they're great um, to put on vegetables and then you put herbs on everything and it's fantastic. You can also do apple cider vinegar, either in your water, apple cider vinegar on your, your meat or your vegetables if you're doing that. Um, if you're doing meat, you want to make sure it's grass fed, organic, pasture raised. So make sure you get, you've got a really rock solid diet this time of year. So important. Hydrate a lot. And, um, you know, when you're consuming food, make sure it's super nutrient rich and high quality organic pasture raised animal products as organic as much as possible when it comes to vegetables. If you do fruit, lemons and limes are great. Avocados, maybe a little bit of berries, but I wouldn't do a lot of fruit because again, fruit's going to drive up your blood sugar and that's going to reduce the, uh, the strength and impact of your immune system. So be sure to uh, to do those things. Okay, so let's see. We've got a question here from Lynette. She says, does vitamin D work by itself or do we have to take a K vitamin to work in conjunction? That's a great question. So vitamin D is extremely helpful and, and a lot of research on just the benefits of vitamin D by itself. And of course you want the vitamin D3, not the vitamin D2. So vitamin D3, one of the most powerful things for the immune system. Can you take it without K? Absolutely, you can. Okay. However, you know, in science, we just find out more and more information every day. And we're finding that the synergistic effects of vitamin D and K2, it's a really good idea to take them together. But you can, you can definitely get great benefits from taking a good high quality vitamin D3 supplement on its own. So you don't have to do that. It's just kind of my preference. That's all. All right. Let's see. We have got a question here from Paula. She says, I add those in my water, not to replace the amount of water, but for electrolytes. I think she's talking about the salts. Here in the desert climate, you need more water and dehydration as common. So yeah, Paula, you're in, a, what is it, Arizona or Colorado or somewhere out there. So in the, in the desert, for sure. I mean, you know, we're, it's really dry. So we're going to, it's, it's going to dehydrate us faster. We need those electrolytes, electrolytes, water and electrolytes that will give you energy all day long. Um, the kind of energy that food never really will, okay? And so food, in a sense, kind of actually slows us down. Um, and we eat more for recovery, for adaptation and recovery than we do for, uh, for, for energy. So yeah, important, important concept there to understand. All right, let's move on here and I'll take some questions at the end. All right, so number four is going to be move your body throughout the day. So in the wintertime, we typically are moving less. We're not going outside as much. We're more sedentary and movement is super important for circulation, for your white blood cells, for oxygenation. We need to make sure we're getting up and moving. I know my family, um, not only do we engage in regular exercise, but also we take a family walk every evening. Now I do have the advantage of living in a Southern state in uh, the Atlanta area. Uh, so that is definitely helpful because, you know, in, in general, we're not getting sub-freezing weather. But um, even when it's really cold, we get all bundled up and we go outside and, and we take a walk as a family. I pull my boys in their, in their blue wagon and we just have a good time. We go around our neighborhood. Then I let them out when we get back to our house and they run around and they start, they try to pull the wagon and we play with them and we look at the moon and the stars and all the airplanes flying above. So it's like we create a family ritual around it. So I'd highly recommend being on a regular exercise plan. And if you're, 
anywhere where it's like, you know, the weather's somewhat decent where you can at least get bundled up and go outside, get out and get fresh air, go to a park, go out in your neighborhood, get out and get fresh air. It's so important for your immune system. So I would highly recommend that. Okay. Number five, last one that we're going to talk about today is key nutrients, vitamin D. Okay. We already had a question about vitamin D. This is the vitamin D that my family takes, vitamin D3, K2 power right here, okay? One capsule of this, 5,000 international units and 90 micrograms of high quality vitamin K2, which is extremely important for your immune system, as well as for calcium metabolism, getting calcium out of the bloodstream, putting it into the bones. So vitamin D3, K2 power, really powerful stuff. Um, typically one capsule is good if you are dealing with a cold or fever or flu, I will typically put people on 50,000 international units of D3K2. Okay, so really high dose for three days. Three day period of time, super high dose. Okay, and that really primes the immune system and will help you a lot. Okay, so to overcome something quickly, that's great. Other than that, for like a maintenance dose, taking about uh, roughly a um, thousand international units per 25 pounds of body weight is a really good idea. We've also got vitamin C. And so this is the, uh, the super C, if you can see that there, super C. All right. And super C has not only the high quality vitamin C, but also the bioflavonoids. So it's kind of similar to what you would get when you squeeze a fresh lemon. It's got all those bioflavonoids that are in there, but in a clinically high dose. So a lot higher than what you get just in a lemon. All right, and that combination of vitamin C and bioflavonoids is a synergistic effect to really ramp up your immune system and uh, strengthen that phagocytic index that we talked about. Um, also very extremely antiviral, so it helps reduce vir virus activity, virus replication in our body, and um, really good for collagen production, for healthy skin, hair, nails, really good for adrenals and energy. A lot of times vitamin C when people start to take, particularly this product, the Super C, they notice big improvements in their energy levels. I know for me, I take roughly uh, two to four grams every single day of the Super C to just keep my energy high, keeps my immune system strong. I do it as just a preventative measure. If I feel like I'm under more stress, I'm taking four grams a day, usually two grams in the morning, two grams later in the day. And just as a maintenance dose, I'm taking one gram in the morning, one gram in the evening before I go to bed as a, as a good high quality maintenance dose. So that's really helpful. And then the last thing is zinc. Zinc is, is extremely critical for healthy immune function. So um, taking a, a good high quality zinc, 20 to 40 milligrams can make a big impact. If somebody's dealing with the flu, okay, if you've got you know, acute, an acute cold fever or flu, Okay, then I'm typically going up to about 80 milligrams a day, usually 40 milligrams twice a day with food of the zinc. Now, the way that you know you're getting too much vitamin C, okay, this is a common question people get. Well, how do I know if I'm getting um, too much, if I'm overdosing the vitamin C? If you take too much vitamin C, you will get diarrhea, okay? So if you didn't have diarrhea before and you take too much of it, you'll get diarrhea, kind of like magnesium. You'll just end up with diarrhea, which in general, if you're not feeling well, actually can be helpful because it's helping the body get rid of stuff. So in it, you know, many clinicians, and I've done this with clients before too, will have people go up to bowel tolerance, meaning that they go up to the point where they do have a bowel movement um, and uh, kind of a wet bowel movement to know that we got enough in their system and now their body's spilling it out into the feces. So that's how you know. Now, how do you know if you're getting too much zinc? How do you know if you're getting too much zinc? Well, that actually would be nausea. So when people get too much zinc, they have not, they, they're nauseous, all right? So that's a, one way to know. How do you know if you're getting too much vitamin D? Well, the best way to know about that would be a lab test, okay, to actually get your vitamin D tested. That would be the main way to know if you're getting too much vitamin D. However, if you just on a general basis are taking roughly five to 10,000 IUs a day, okay, or kind of trying to stick in that range of 1,000 IUs per 25 pounds of body weight, then you're not going to have too much vitamin D. The only uh, reported cases of toxicity are when people had over 200 uh, nanograms per milliliter. And it takes a really high, it takes like, fit, you got to take 20,000 international units a day plus on a daily basis for months to get, get your levels up that high. So if you are super dosing, 
doing like a 50,000 IU, you should only be for about three days to really ramp up the immune system. And if you do that, your chance of getting too much is, um, you know, again, it's just basically the only way you would get too much is just neglect and, and not really understanding how much you should be taking. So hopefully that is extremely helpful for you guys. And uh, I'll jump in here and answer a few questions that people have. I saw you guys were, were asking a lot of questions. And again, I just want to thank you guys for being on. And hopefully this added a lot of value. And if you missed, if you came in late, um, you definitely can uh, can listen to the replay. This is going to be on my page. And please share it as well. You know, there's so many people out there that are dealing with colds, fevers, and flus that need to know this information. So please share it. And also for being on, what I'm going to do is give you a coupon code for my store. And so the coupon code is this. It's Jockers, like my last name, J-O-C-K-E-R-S, 10. Jockers 10 that will give you a 10% discount. So some of you guys are needing products that will actually get you a 10% discount on any products you wanna buy, whether it's the vitamin C, the zinc, whether it's the vitamin D, um, and we have free shipping on all orders in the United States over $49. So um, so again, Jockers 10, all one word. So it's all one word, J-O-C-K-E-R-S 10, all one word. Okay, let's jump in and answer some questions here. All right. Larissa says, how, what about a, she goes, what about vitamin A and C? How much of each to prevent? Great question. Vitamin A is a really important one. All right. And uh, the best way to get vitamin A is going to be either through organ meats like liver. Okay. It was really high in vitamin A or cod liver oil is actually a really good source of vitamin A. And from food sources, the egg yolk, pasture-raised egg yolk, as well as cod, or I'm sorry, yeah, I already said cod liver oil, but uh, pasture-raised egg yolk and grass-fed butter, really good sources of vitamin A. So whether you're eating organ meats, which is a great idea, like grass-fed liver, um, or doing pasture-raised egg yolks or grass-fed butter, that's those are really, really good sources of vitamin A. If you wanted to take a vitamin A supplement, because remember, it is fat-soluble, kind of somewhat similar rules to uh, vitamin D, about the same amount. So 5,000 uh, overall is, is a fantastic amount. Um, if you're dealing with a cold fever or flu, you can bump it up. I typically don't recommend more than 20,000, all right? So typically getting it from food-based sources with vitamin A is best. So grass-fed butter, egg yolk, um, avocado has it in there, particularly a fat-soluble retinol. Um, which is the best form. The beta carotene, which is um, kind of a, a subtype of vitamin A, but uh, doesn't doesn't uh, have quite the same impact as the fat soluble form. You can find, of course, everybody knows carrots, but it's also in a lot of non-starchy vegetables like uh, kale, collard greens, spinach, uh, different things like that. They all have a lot of vitamin A. Vitamin C, I typically, for to prevention, I typically recommend 2,000 um, or two grams, I should say, 2,000 milligrams a day, two grams every single day, split it up like a gram in the morning, gram in the evening. And ideally, something like what we have in our Super C, where you've got bioflavonoids in it as well for the synergistic effect. If you're dealing with a crisis, again, you can, you can do a high amounts of vitamin C. Um, or if you're under stress, if you know you're under more stress or you're feeling a little bit more immune susceptible, bump it up to four grams. If you're dealing with the cold fever or flu, then I would typically recommend really doing about two grams every two hours, okay? So two grams every two hours until you knock it out, okay? And while you're doing that, also do about 20 milligrams of zinc every two hours, okay? So 20 milligrams of zinc, um, two grams of vitamin C, and then I would recommend 5,000 IUs of vitamin D every two hours while you're awake, until you knock that thing out, okay? So if you did like 10 ramp ups, I guess you could say, um, or eight ramp ups of that, then um, then that's gonna get you those clinically high doses that are gonna make a big impact. Again, zinc, if you're taking too much, you're gonna notice nausea. Vitamin C, you're gonna have diarrhea, all right? So that's what you wanna do with vitamin D. You just don't wanna take really high doses for, for more than three days and you drop it down. So really good questions as far as that goes, okay. Donna says, Renee, my, okay, so she's just talking about that. Let's see. Renee says, would you also recommend chiropractic care for a 12-year-old? Absolutely, I would. Um, you know, my boys, they're, they're two-year-olds. Um, they've been getting adjusted since birth. I adjusted them after birth. And at my clinic, Exodus Health Center in Kennesaw, Georgia, I've got a great pediatric specialist, Dr. Shannon Good. She sees kids 
um, all from all over the Atlanta area. She's amazing. Um, I, of course, have adjusted kids. And you can find pediatric uh, chiropractors through the ICPA. And you can also just try to find like a really good chiropractor in your area. You can ask around at your health food store is a good idea and ask for you know, people that are a little bit more health savvy, who they would recommend, who they've had experiences with, um, and they'll let you know. And um, and then you you can also, you know, any doctor that you have, you should always somewhat interview them. So you can interview them and, and ask them how many kids they adjust. Do, are, do they love adjusting kids? Do they have any advanced certifications of adjusting kids? Things like that, um, which can help you. And by the time, by the time a, a, a child is 12, the it's it's more similar to adjusting an adult okay again adults are still going to be larger so it's different um and you can find non-force techniques if you're concerned about that where uh where they're not using you know osseous adjustments and cracking bones and things like that so if that's something you want you definitely can find chiropractors that use instrument adjusting all right other questions okay paula says would you recommend this dosage for say a 16 year old of the D3 to ward off the flu. Yeah, so I would recommend, depends on the individual's weight, okay? But if they jump it up to about 10,000 IUs for let's say a week to prevent the flu, that's a great idea. If they have the flu, they can jump it up to 50,000 IUs per day. Um, vitamin D you typically want with food, typically, but you don't necessarily have to. Um, but 50,000 IUs per day split up in dosages, like five to eight dosages of that. And um, so you split it up and uh, you would do that over, over, over a course of a day for three days. So hopefully that's helpful. All right. Carrie says, if someone is required to take a flu vaccine, do you have recommendations for them to help avoid any negative kickback, long-term toxic accumulation? Um, yeah, there's lots of things they can do. In fact, I typically recommend, we have a product called super glutathione, which is your body's master antioxidant, really ramps up the detoxification pathways. So taking a double dose of that before, start, ideally starting about a week before, okay, um, by taking that, and then definitely afterwards, along with taking activated charcoal, taking activated charcoal between meals um, can be really helpful. I also recommend probiotics. Uh, I recommend a lot of super hydration. A lot of the strategies we've already discussed here um, can be really, really helpful, but those are the two key products are the super glutathione as well as the activated charcoal. So that's what we're typically looking at with that. Um, okay, let's see. What, okay. Answer one last question, guys. Again, I really appreciate all you guys being on. I'm gonna have to go here in just a minute. It's almost one o'clock. Um, okay, Renee says, are those recommendations for adults only when you're ill? Yes, they are. Uh, for kids, you can drop it in half. And typically with my boys, I give them a lot of cod liver oil. They, they really are going to get the vitamin D. I'll give my boys at times six to eight teaspoons of cod liver oil. Fortunately, the, the brand that we sell on drjockers.com and Nordic Naturals is flavored with lemon oil. It kind of tastes like a lemon oil. And my boys have no problems at all consuming that. And um, that's got a thousand international units of vitamin D per teaspoon. And so again, my boys, they're, they're roughly about 30 pounds. So 1,000 international units per 25 pounds of body weight is kind of the ideal amount. So if I'm giving them six to eight teaspoons because maybe they're not feeling as well or, or they've got feverish type symptoms, they're getting a ton of vitamin D, lots of vitamin A in there because it's also got 1,000 IUs of vitamin A, um, also a lot of omega-3 fatty acids, which are also very, very good for the immune system. So, um, I'll do that. I'll do probiotics as well. I didn't even get into that, but probiotics can be extremely good for kids. The challenge with like young children, like my boys can't swallow pills. So I need to use oils or supplements so that I can open the capsule and put it in things like the probiotics we can do that with. The problem with vitamin C is, it's like really harsh and really acidic and tastes really nasty, okay? It's got a really nasty taste to it. So if you try to like put it in water, it just doesn't taste good. Um, and that's the issue, but zinc, zinc doesn't really have as much flavor. You just put it right into a shake or something along those lines. So that can be really helpful. So anyways, guys, I'm gonna jump off now, but I uh, really hope that you guys got a lot of value out of today. And just um, to recap, 
We talked about top five ways to prevent the flu. Number one was high quality sleep. We talked all about that. If you missed it, jump on and listen to the rebroadcast. We talked about super hydration, just so important to hydrate your body to help detoxify and to help fuel every cell in your system. We talked about staying off of sugar and carbs because they significantly reduce your phagocytic index, your body's ability to, uh, to metabolize pathogens and get these things, these disease causing bacteria and viruses and all kinds of stuff like that out of our system. Okay. So we talked about that. We also talked about moving our body throughout the day. So important for detoxification. So important for helping strengthen the immune system. And finally, we talked about key nutrients, vitamin D, vitamin C, and also zinc. So go out, start applying those things. And if you're doing it the way that I've, I've been talking about, uh, you know, your, the, your chance of getting the flu is very low. Certainly keep your stress down. Make sure you're really being intentional about your health. And if you do that, I believe that um, you are going to be able to survive this killer flu and um, in fact thrive while uh, while unfortunately other people are suffering. OK, and so you'll be uh, you'll be more of the caretaker. And, uh, and and guys, let's just keep praying for all our friends and family members that are suffering. Um, it's definitely no fun to deal with the flu and um, and pass this information along to them. So anyways, guys, bless you. We'll see you on a future uh, Facebook live here.